After European contact, by the 1700s, the traditional Cherokee family and political system began to transition from matrilineal clans into nuclear families headed by men. Because of this change, orphaned children who were once cared for by the adults of his or her clan relied on the now centralized Cherokee government to provide for their care and upbringing. These provisions were much needed following the immense loss of life resulting from both the Trail of Tears and the Civil War. By 1875, the nation had secured the former mansion of prominent Cherokee Louis Ross, located near Salina, and enlarged it so that it could house more than 100 orphans. The Cherokee National Council selected Walter Adair Duncan to be the superintendent of the Cherokee Orphan Asylum. Duncan ran the asylum as a home first and school second, a place where the children called the staff aunt and uncle. The majority of the teachers were Cherokee, and so classes were taught in both English and Cherokee, which provided more learning opportunities for students who only spoke Cherokee. In addition to academics, Superintendent Duncan also acquired a printing press so that the children could learn typesetting. In the fall of 1880, they began to publish The Children's Playground, a newsletter that was printed along with Duncan's Orphan Asylum Press. The Children's Playground was written entirely by the students and featured their poems, essays, and thoughts on life at the asylum. Editor Lizzie Stinson took to the soapbox in her composition entitled, If We Would Mind Our Own Business, while other students wrote odes to such simple subjects as birds, trees, dogs, and desks. The playground also contained reports on students' academic performance, while retaining the motto, A little nonsense now and then is relished by the best of men. A fire destroyed the Cherokee Orphan Asylum on November 17, 1903, at which time the orphans were transferred to other institutions or provided for by the tribe in different ways. This spring house, which was once the source of water for the asylum's residents, is the only remaining relic of the Cherokee Orphan Asylum. Now in the Salina City Park, the spring house is one of the oldest structures in the state and is listed on the National Register of Historic Places.